If you are looking to upgrade your computer and you're in a tight budget, well, this AMD card might actually be what you want. Some days ago a picture of the new RX 7600 graphics card from AMD has been leaked, supposedly from a store in the Asian market and alongside that we also had actual pictures of its Sapphire Pulse model that gave us a good amount of information about design, power draw and even performance. And on top of that we even got some very base tips on its price. And in my opinion that's the best point. And I'm telling you right away that this card will be a very very good deal. Like today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Well, although the picture was leaked, it doesn't actually mean that the card is being already sold, it just means that someone, possibly an employee of that same store, took a picture of the card and sent it to some online sources. As in a matter of fact, this card is supposed to be released by the end of this month, May. That same first image shows us the box of the Sapphire Pulse RX 7600, confirming the 8GB VRAM alongside data that can be seen when zooming in in the side of the box. In this case, 32 RDNA3 compute units with ray tracing and AI acceleration, 32 MB of Infinity Cache, which is basically L3 Cache, AMD Radiance Display Engine, which is one of the new things that comes with RDNA3 architecture, with the last two ones being Radeon Boost and Radeon Anti-Lag features. And by this information only, we can actually deduce some very interesting things. Firstly, the previous non-XT6600 was a cut-down Navi 23 that had only 28 computer units, 1792 cores and 112 TMUs, while the new non-XT RX7600 is comparable to the older RX6600 XT that also has 32 computer units, 2048 cores and 128 TMUs, meaning that since this is the full Navi 33 chip, we won't have an RX7600 XT with the same config as in the previous generations, with AMD possibly skipping it or, I don't really know, maybe just doing a super clocked version of the non-XT one. I don't really know. But now, performance-wise, this is where things get even better. If you don't know, the RX 7900 series featured the multi-chip module design, MCM, which is the first of its kind in the mainstream market, meaning that it has several dies separated for different jobs, basically like the Ryzen CPUs where you have a specific die for the cores and another one for the I.O., so input-output, that are then connected by the Infinity Fabric. But the RX 7600 will be the first RDNA 3 GPU to be released on a single die instead of MCM. And why am I focusing on this? Because of performance scaling. We only had the RX 7900 series before to compare to in terms of scaling versus the previous generation, and things weren't that great. I mean, the RX 7900 XT with more computer units, more cores, more ops, more VRAM and more bandwidth than the RX 6950 XT wasn't that much faster than it, and it consumed the same amount of power. Meaning that the scaling on RDNA 3 is not that great compared to RDNA 2, at least on MCM GPUs, that is. The question is, how will a single die RDNA 3 GPU scale compared to the MCM RDNA 3 GPUs as well? Well, in theory, it should scale better. And that's because, for example, you don't have the inner latencies of the Infinity Fabric holding you down. So, I would say this card would be around the, the RX 7650's XT performance, or maybe even higher if the scaling is much better on single dies versus the MCM ones. And even if you don't care about the performance, you still have the fine perks of RDNA 3, including AI acceleration, better ray tracing performance, and hardware AV1 encoding and decoding that can now be used not also for recording, but also for streaming. Meaning that streamers can now have much better streaming quality than they had before with an AMD card, since YouTube already supports AV1 and software like OBS already allow you to stream using the hardware AV1 encoding of your RDNA 3 GPU, that is much better than any previous AVC encoding technique. So we have very interesting performance, we have very interesting features, 
But what about the power draw? And this leads us to the out-of-the-box pictures that were then leaked on the Sapphire Pulse version. Firstly, we can see that the design is slightly different from the past generations, with some red stripes close to the fence and the racing flag type design on the side of the card. The card features a single 8-pin power connector, which means that the power draw won't exceed the 225 watts, which is 150 watts from the 8-pin connector, plus 75 watts from the motherboard. And will most likely consume lower than that, I suppose it will be around 160 watts, as the mobile version does not consume more than 120 watts. So I believe that 160, 170 is very close to the reality. And finally, the price. Nothing is yet confirmed, but the most recent tip actually aims to around $249. And as stated by videocards.com, I do not believe AMD will set this card's price above $300, as the RX 7900 XT has more than doubled the physical units of the RX 7600 and can be already bought for $799 or less. So if AMD follows its own pricing methodology from the current RDNA 3 cards, well, this one will be below $300. And having a card more or less with the same performance as the 6700 XT or the 6750 XT with better ray tracing, with better power draw, with uh, AV1 encoding and decoding in terms of hardware, so up to 7 times faster, for a lower value than the previous generation RX 6600 will be awesome for budget builders. And not for only on not only for budget builders, but for the overall gaming community that can actually buy a decent card uh, for a very very good price. I hope I definitely hope this is true at least below three hundred three hundred dollars or at least at a maximum of three hundred dollars. That would be massive, and AMD would definitely get a lot of market share in that um, price bracket. In that price bracket, everything would be AMD, unless NVIDIA decreased the prices quite a lot. And from what we've seen so far, I don't think it's happening. So yeah, AMD would definitely get some market share from having the RX 7600 and 7700X once it gets released at decent prices. And well guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video once again. Thank you for watching, that means a lot. Leave your comment in the comment section, let me know what you think about the RX 7600, what do you think it will be, what do you think What do you think the performance overall will be, more pending to the, to the, 60, to the 6700 XT, more pending to the 6750 XT maybe, um, if you think that the AV1 encoding and decoding is something that you would buy this card for, uh, well, let me know what you think about this card overall, uh, and maybe soon, possibly, if things go well, uh, I will buy myself, if AMD doesn't send one, I will buy myself the RX 7600 to test, to give you info about this card, in terms of streaming, in terms of recording, in terms of pure performance, rate racing, and so on. I will definitely do it because I find this card very, very attractive for what it is, at least for now. So I'll definitely get one. Thanks a lot for watching once again and see you in the next video.